Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to Mount Calvary. My name is Naomi and I'm glad that you're here to worship with us today. He is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father and rise in life just as Jesus rose from the dead. Let us pray. Most merciful God, my life does not reflect that this day is most important to me. I sin daily. I forget your presence in my life. I do not worship you as often or as sincerely as you have commanded. Forgive me and help me to abandon those parts of my life that keep me from you for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, just as surely as the sun rises in the morning, our Lord and Savior Jesus rose to newness of life to give you the full forgiveness of sins and eternal life through him. Go in his peace. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us worship the Lord.
Today's Old Testament lesson comes from Psalm 118. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today's gospel lesson comes from John chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he, said, he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Happy Easter, boys and girls. We're so glad you're joining us today at Mount Calvary. I've got a Bible verse for you today. Can you read it with me? This is what it says. How wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Can you say that with me? How wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Can I see some arm movement, movements with you? How wide is wide? Wide is really wide. How wide? And how long? And how deep? And how high is the love of Christ? It is so big that Jesus loved us so much that he would rise from the dead. I brought a balloon today with me to show you. A balloon, of course, goes up, it goes down, it goes flying over the side and flying over the other side, it flies a long distance towards you and back towards me. And the balloon reminds us that Jesus' love is wide and long and high and deep. He loved us so much that he would raise again to newness of life so that we would live forever. Have a great Easter today, boys and girls. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. For your love is high and deep and wide and long. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter.
Happy Easter Mount Calvary. My name is Eric, I'm the pastor here. I'm so glad you're joining us today to celebrate Easter with us. I pray that you and your family have a blessed Easter as you celebrate today. Let's begin with a word of prayer and then we'll dive into the word. Lord God, thank you so much for blessing us with this glorious day. Uh, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. Imagine waking up one day and everything is out of the ordinary. For example, let's say that you are a guinea pig and you're having breakfast with your good friend, the koala bear. And during breakfast with your friend, the koala bear, he breaks some shocking news to you and he tells you this. <clears throat> uh, my friend, uh, the guinea pig, I hate to tell you this, but you are not from Guinea and you're not a pig. No, no, you are a rodent from South America. You are completely beside yourself. It's a day out of the ordinary. You are shocked, and you don't know exactly what to say except break some tough news to your friend, the koala bear. So over breakfast, you tell the koala bear, you tell him, my friend, Mr. Koala Bear, you, my friend, are not a bear. <laughs> you are actually a marsupial. He is shocked as well. It's a day out of the ordinary. And then you start talking about how are you going to break this news to your friend, uh, the prairie dog? Because he is not really a dog. He's more like a rat. Well, Easter Sunday was a day like nothing else. It was an extraordinary day. Everyone had seen Jesus die on the cross on Friday. He had breathed his last. They knew that Jesus had definitely died because the Roman soldiers were good at their job. They don't let rebel kings go on living after the, experiencing the cross. Instead of breaking Jesus' legs, the Roman soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear and blood and water came out. They knew that Jesus was dead. It was most certain. And to be certain of this, Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the rulers of the day were going to make sure Jesus and those following Jesus, well, that, that crew, that day was over. Well, Jesus was buried by his disciples in an empty tomb, a tomb that hadn't been used before. No bones were in it. It was a fresh tomb. He was buried, and then a big rock was put over the face of the tomb. It was sealed. And then there was a guard in front of it, too, to make sure that no one, and I mean no one, messed around with that tomb. Jesus was most certainly dead. Until, until Easter Sunday, when it was a new day, something that was totally unexpected came their way. Well, today I want to talk to you about three different places that people uh, kind of a land when it comes to Easter. The first place is this. There are some people that believe that Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead, and Jesus is still alive today. That's the first place. The second place, when you look around you, there are people around you that think Jesus might be alive. They're exploring Jesus and maybe this resurrection thing some more. And so they're considering that maybe Jesus is really alive. And then there's a third place, a third grouping of people that think that Jesus is dead. Jesus is really not important. Easter Sunday, eh, it's really about chocolates and bunnies, not about a risen Savior. And so if you look at the world around us, predominantly we've got three different places where people land. The first place is Jesus is alive. The second place is some people think that Jesus might be alive, and they're exploring it some more. The third place is Jesus is dead, or I don't care about Jesus. Those three places are three different places that people land on Easter Sunday. But your view of the resurrection, if you hold the first view that Jesus is alive, that view of the resurrection will change everything in your life. It will change your conversations with your kids and your grandchildren. It will change your relationships. It will change how you journey with your loved ones as they go through the valley of the shadow of death. The resurrection will change how you view your finances. The resurrection will change the way you use your time. 
The resurrection will change your purpose and your direction in life. You see, Easter Sunday and Jesus' resurrection just changes everything. It's the way we ex experience an extraordinary life. It's the way we get out of our ordinary life. It's through that resurrection. But on that first Easter morning, there were really three realities that I want to show you today. The first reality is the reality of the angels. The reality of the angels was the angels knew that Jesus was alive. The second view is the view or the reality of the women. The women thought, well, they thought that Jesus might really be alive, that there might really be a resurrection. And so the resurrection might be becoming a reality for them. And then the third view is the view of the men. The view of the men is this. They were locked behind closed doors. They were convinced that Jesus was dead. And ladies, you know how guys respond to everything. They're always the last to know. So they were truly the last to know that Jesus was alive. So today we're going to take a look at these three views. We're going to go through them together. And we're going to see where you land. Maybe your view is the view of the reality of the angels. Maybe your view is the reality of the women. Or maybe you're really the last to know. And your view is the reality of the men. Wherever your view is at, I'm hoping that you'll see that Jesus and his resurrection is really the one reality that makes a true difference in your life. So let's get started. The first reality is the reality of the angels. If you have a Bible with you, you can follow along. I invite you to open it up to Luke chapter 24. We're going to verses 5 through 7. Easter morning starts like this. It's still dark outside, and the women take burial spices to the tomb where Jesus was buried. When they arrived there, the sun was just starting to show, and the stone had been rolled away. The women were in fear, and they didn't know what to think, so they peeked inside the tomb. Jesus wasn't there. And then they bumped into some angels, and this is what it says in Luke chapter 24, verses 5 through 7. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the angel said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day, be raised again. I love the reaction of the angels on Easter Sunday. See, the reaction of the angels is they know what's really happening. They've caught up with the present reality that Jesus is alive. He has been raised from the dead. And so the angels are sort of in shock that the humans <laughs> haven't caught up to speed. The angels are sort of in shock, too, that the humans haven't been listening to what Jesus said he was going to do. You see, when Jesus says something, he follows through. Jesus doesn't lie. When he tells his followers, when he tells you and me that he was going to die for us, that he was going to rise for us, we can take him at his word. And that's where the angels are at. They are responding in shock and awe. They kind of see it sort of odd that the humans, the ladies, the women, don't, they're not following. They're not up to speed with what is really happening here. They're sort of like, well, there's like an English theological term for this. It's a three-letter word called duh, D-U-H. It's when you state something obvious and then it becomes apparent to you. So you can kind of hear it like this. The angels are talking to the women and then saying to the women, why are you looking for the living among the dead here at a cemetery, duh? He's not here. He's alive, just as he told you, duh? See, the, the women are living their lives out of step with reality, and the angels know it, and they're sort of shocked that the humans aren't up to speed on things. And so the response throughout the Gospels is sort of in shock and awe about this. Let me show you another example. Take your Bible or follow along on the screen. You can go to Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 and 7. This is what Matthew says about the resurrection in this encounter between the women and the angels. 
The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now, now I have told you. It's almost like the angels are saying, keep up with this, people. This is exactly what Jesus said he was going to do. Now keep up with the reality, the present reality that's happening around you. So a question for you this Easter day. Is your reality the reality of the angels? Or is your reality more of the women at this point? Well, if your reality is more like the women, that's okay. Hang in there because there's more good news for you. Let's take a look at the reality of the women. Take your Bible, and I want you to go to John chapter 20. We're going to look at the first couple verses. You can also follow along on the screen in front of you. John chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. John describes Easter Sunday like this. On the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So some observations here about Mary and the other women and the disciples at this point. Well, one of their biggest things that's happening to them is a lot of fear and concern. They're concerned that they don't know where their Lord is. They think he is still dead and his body is gone somewhere. Maybe the Romans or the Jewish authorities took him. They don't know exactly what's happened, but they are living a life of concern and fear. That's their reality that they are in. They don't really know what's taking place here. Of course, you know, the reality is the guards protected the tomb. The tomb was well guarded so that the body would not be stolen. There's a lot of fear and concern, though, that's happening in the women. Let me walk it through with you through several verses here in John chapter 20. First of all, in verse 2, they say, we don't know where they put him. Do you hear the concern and anxiety in their voices? Verse 9, they still didn't understand what was going on. Mary's alone and crying, and she doesn't know what's happening. She hasn't caught up to the reality of the resurrection. Drop down to verse 13. She thinks the gardener is near, and she hears his voice speak to her, and she says to the gardener, I don't know where they have taken him. <laughs> she doesn't know that the gardener is really Jesus yet. And then finally, look at verse 14 with me. She did not realize. See, she hadn't caught up to speed with the reality of the resurrection yet. Now look at your life over the past year, during the pandemic. Has there been a lot of fear and concern and anxiety in your life? If that's the case, welcome to Easter morning. Welcome to the day that Jesus is present with you through every, every day. See, that first Easter morning, Mary was having a very bad day. She was so concerned, thinking that her friend and her Savior had died and his body was missing. She hadn't caught up with the reality that he was alive. And that gardener wasn't really a gardener. It was Jesus. She fully comes up to speed with the reality when Jesus calls out to her by name and says, Mary, Mary, Jesus knows your name too. He knows your fear, your concerns, and your anxieties. And when you're worried and you feel all alone, you are never alone. Jesus is alive and he stands with you. He's with you every step of the way. And that's the reality of the resurrection. The resurrection changes how you view life. Remember how earlier I told you how the resurrection changes the way you view things in life? The way you talk about things with your kids or grandkids? The way you live out your life and your purpose in life? See, the resurrection changes not just the end when you die, 
but it changes how you live today and right now. So when Jesus calls Mary by name, it changes her reality. She has Easter joy. Well, at this point, Mary is caught up to the reality that matches the angels. But where are the men? Where are they? Where are the brave apostles, the courageous ones? Where's Peter with his sword when he was ready to cut off a soldier's ear? Isn't he standing around ready? No, well, turns out that the apostles have all locked themselves up behind closed doors. They're hiding out. They're not so brave after all. So, let's take a look at the third reality, the reality of the men. Take your Bibles, and I want you to go to Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 11. That's Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 11. We'll also put this up on the screen for you. Now, the angels have lived out this reality that Jesus is alive. The women are now caught, catching up to speed that Jesus is alive. But again, the men, they are not so sure about this. Look at what it says here in Mark 16. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. Verse 11, they didn't believe it. They didn't believe Mary's word. They didn't take her at her word. <laughs> they hadn't taken Jesus at his word earlier, too, that he would be crucified and he would be raised from the dead. They needed proof. They wanted to see that Jesus was alive. Have you ever been absolutely certain of something only to realize that you weren't so certain after all of it? It's called certain uncertainties. When you come to terms that you are certain about something, but really there was a lot of uncertainty in it. This happened to me earlier this year. Maybe if you're on social media, you've seen this picture too. Earlier this year, my wife showed me a picture of some sneakers. I was certain, well, I thought it was certain, I was certain that the sneakers were gray with mint green stripes and laces. My wife told me, gray sneakers, mint green laces, what are you seeing? The sneakers aren't that color. The sneakers, the sneakers are pink with white laces. I said, what? What are you looking at? Do you need glasses? Come on, look at it clearly. They are gray with mint or seafoam green laces. Well, it turns out that she was right after all. The sneakers really are pink with white laces. I didn't see it right after all. And that's how it was with the men, the apostles, who were hiding out behind closed doors. They hadn't caught up with the reality yet. They had to see it clearly with their own eyes. Jesus would eventually reveal himself alive to the disciples, and they would, res would respond with joy and peace. The re response of the apostles had not caught up with the new reality that Jesus is really alive. Initially, Jesus' followers did not come to believe in his resurrection until they had seen him. And maybe that's hard for you and me to believe too. But throughout the Bible, throughout the Gospels, throughout the New Testament, we get to see that not just the women saw Jesus alive, not just the angels saw Jesus alive, and not just 12 disciples, but there are hundreds of people that saw Jesus alive, because he is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Now, why should Easter Sunday be so important to you? Let me just share two reasons why Easter Sunday should be important to you. First reason, there are not really three realities. There's actually just one reality, Jesus is alive. 
He went to the cross to die for your sins. He rose again on Easter Sunday to give you life forevermore. And that life impacts how you live your life today. To live out of step with that reality is just sort of odd. I was once at a funeral where there was absolutely no mention of the resurrection. No mention of Jesus and the resurrection at all. And that funeral just felt out of step with reality. There was no hope. There was only sadness. At the end of the funeral service, people were just left in tissues and crying. The reality, friends in Christ, is Jesus is alive. And so we're invited to live our life today in step with that reality. Here's a second reason that Easter is so important to you and to me. The second reason is Jesus has won for you and your loved ones eternal life. My family likes to go camping. We've got one of those $200 Amazon tents, and sometimes we'll go camping out in the woods someplace on like a state campground, but other times we'll go camping at an RV park. And when we go camping at an RV park, we reserve a spot, you know, where you pull in, there's a picnic table there. We put our $200 Amazon tent down the ground, you know, like 40 feet away from a $500,000 motor home. Yeah, we're living large, we're having a good time camping and vacationing. Well, a few years ago, it hit me. It hit me that RV parks, are just like cemeteries. I know, it's kind of weird that you go on vacation and you think about Easter Sunday when you're at an RV park. Let me share with you. See, when I had reserved that spot at the RV park, it was just for a couple nights. And when I was done, we packed up our tent and we left and we never returned back to that spot ever again. The same is true for cemeteries. Cemeteries are just like RV parks. They're just rentals. When Jesus comes again in glory, the dead will be made alive. There'll be a resurrection of the dead. And it'll be a glorious day. T today, our suburban cemeteries are quiet places. But when Jesus comes back again in glory, those quiet suburban and rural cemeteries, they're going to be lively cities of living people. May God bless you as you celebrate Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who through death your Son has destroyed sin and death, and by his rising to life again gave us assurance that the grave does not have the final say, but our risen Savior has made for certain an inheritance of eternal life that does not fade. You have guaranteed a crown of life for all who believe in Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. What a profound gift for Easter. In his glorious name we pray. Amen.
through the Spirit who clothes faith with certainty, honor and blessing, glory and praise to the King crowned with power and authority. Dear friends in Christ, let's pray to the Lord. Gracious Father, we give you thanks and praise on this Easter day that we can worship and praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. We are so thankful for the gift of eternal life through Jesus. And Lord, on this day, we pray the prayer that your Son, our risen Savior, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Go in his Easter peace. He is risen. <laughs>